Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Troy and today we are taking the Rivian RT1 down our rally course. Uh, in the last episode we took the Volkswagen Beetle Herbie down the rally course. Did a uh, fairly respectable time there. So I've gone ahead and unlocked this, the Rivian RT1 pickup truck. There is also another Rivian vehicle that I can go and unlock. It's like an SUV version of the RT1. Um, but I decided that I wanted to take this pickup down the rally course because it's an off-road pickup truck. It is also fully electric, which uh, we've had a few electric cars run down the course already. We've got the Porsche Taycan Turbo S sat in fifth place, which is quite respectable actually. And we also have the Jaguar I Pace down in 13th place. So I'm curious to see how the Rivian will rack up against those cars. Obviously, it is a brand new vehicle in the world. Um, Rivian is a new car brand, it is fully electric, it is all wheel drive as well, and it is this like big truck. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade the thing to start with. Uh, now, it is fully electric, so there will be no engine swaps available. Uh, oh, there is actually some engine swaps. Okay, that's interesting. I wasn't actually expecting that. Um, so we can... It's, it's sat at 835 horsepower as standard, so that's not a bad showing from this car. Uh, we can put in a street motor, takes up to 900. Sport motor takes it up to 1,002, or we can have the race motor, which takes it up to 1,086. 1,180 foot-pound of torque. That is quite a lot, and don't forget that we are all-wheel drive as well. So, yes, we'll go ahead and slap that in there. I'm hoping that we can get up to S1 class in this car. I haven't actually tested whether we can or not. Um, we can go ahead and slap on Forza Aero, add this big bull bar on the front, which personally I really dislike. Uh, oops, I actually did apply it there. Uh, and then on the rear we can add the sort of like spare wheel carrier, like the Baja style thing. All that does is add weight and makes the car look a little bit uglier. Um, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of the look of this car. Um, is not the nicest looking pickup I've ever seen. We had the uh, Chevy K10 uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that was a nice looking car, uh, nice looking pickup. This thing is fairly ugly, but I'm curious to see how it will perform. Uh, so yes, all the vehicles are upgraded to S1 class. All vehicles will run the Rally Tire Compound, or this one, uh, the off-road tyre compound as it's known in Horizon 5. It was previously the rally tyre compound. Now as standard it does come with the off-road race tyre compound or kind of a version of it. You can see they're very similar um, but the rules of the series call for the rally tyre compound so we'll go with those. Uh, we'll also slap on the biggest wheels that we can. Um, not massive, 295s um, some of the muscle cars have had like 350s, so not massive, but yeah, we have got four-wheel drive. Now, we saw in um, one of the episodes, I can't remember which vehicle it was, it might have been the K10, actually, um, that we could upgrade the tyre size, and I did find that the larger uh, sidewall profile actually did um, sort of help off-road so we'll go ahead and uh, slap those on uh, that looks good there we'll keep these stock wheels um, I've been running stock wheels on I think every vehicle so far so we'll leave the stock wheels uh, we'll go ahead and put a cam 5 drive shaft on and we'll go for a is there a rally diff a rally diff there we go so we can do a little bit of tuning uh, we will then go ahead and slap some brakes on. Um, we can put it on off-road springs and dampers. That will allow us to tune the 
ride and it does lift the pickup ever so slightly not going to bother with anti-roll bars i don't think and we'll go for a bit of weight reduction we actually remove 1600 pounds so that's uh just under a ton so 2000 pounds is about a ton so um that's quite a lot of weight reduction it is a heavy boy though to start with it's nearly seven thousand pounds so that's uh it's about three and a half tons we can bring it down to five thousand pounds it's about two and a half tons so not too bad there um, I'm actually thinking that the heavier weight of the vehicle is going to be a good thing. It's going to force the wheels into the ground, give us better traction. Through the water splashes, we're not going to get slowed down as much. Um, the parts where we might struggle with the weight are up the hills. There are a few hills on this course. Um, so we'll see how it performs. We've got 1,080 horsepower so um not a bad showing there i'm gonna go ahead and paint the vehicle and tune it slightly and i'll meet you guys over at the rally course okay here we go for the rivian's first attempt uh now obviously electric we don't have any gears so it's going to be instant acceleration it sounds quite cool coming through my headphones you guys probably won't be able to hear it over me talking Nearly up to 150 miles an hour down the straight. I'm having to jump on the brakes early to get all of that weight slowed down. Obviously, we did go for the upgraded brakes, but like I was showing you guys, there is a lot of weight to lug around, and I can feel that actually. Um, but it does not get slowed down in the water splashes whatsoever. It just battled through those. But I think we're going to have to remember to be on the brakes a lot, lot earlier than some of the other vehicles. But it seems to be putting the power down quite nicely. We've got those rally tyres. We've got the upgraded sidewall profiles. That's going to soak up some of the bumps and obviously the rally suspension as well. I noticed when I was editing a couple of the other episodes that we've done in the previous weeks, I kept saying round three when it was supposed to be round two. So I will try not to do that today. Um, the not changing gear thing is a little bit odd, I have to say. It does take a bit of getting used to, because I drive with uh, manual gear change, not with the clutch, just clutchless up and down. Uh, we're a little bit wide through there, but that can sometimes be a faster line. Uh, we're cresting the hill here at nearly 120, that's not bad. Uh, that is actually very, very fast. I think this could be our fastest electric car, uh, but we'll wait to see what the first run tells us. We're going to jump on the brakes a little bit through there. That corner is horrible. Been caught out a few times on there. We get a little bit of a tank slapper going through that corner. We slowed down a little bit in these last couple of corners. I'm a little bit off the racing line brush the fence there ever so slightly that was the two minute mark coming down the hill this is going to be a pretty fast first attempt and we cross the line at a 209.964 uh, that actually puts it literally just behind the Taycan um, actually just behind the Bentley, Bentley Continental Supersport um, literally uh, a hundredth of a second behind that car um, so we're not that far from the Taycan the Taycan did a 28.729 um, we can definitely beat the Continental Supersport with a little a little bit of a cleaner lap I think and possibly beat the Porsche as well so we might be looking at our fastest electric car at the moment let's have another attempt and see what we can do okay round number two i got it right it is round number two we're going to try and just be a little bit cleaner on this so make sure we're shaving off those couple of tents all around the course and that will add up to a second overall and hopefully we can beat the porsche's lap time i jumped on the brake super early there but we still couldn't get it slowed down enough for that corner this thing has a lot of weight behind it. I'm having to brake quite a lot. We're almost missing that checkpoint. 
I've tried my best to keep this as clean and as smooth as possible. Um, but the electric cars are a little bit odd to drive. Like I said, there's no gear changing, which I am used to. Um, they sound very quiet, so there's no sort of perception of speed. So that can be a little bit deceiving in braking as well. Because usually you're sort of hitting the rev limiter or you're right on the red line coming into a corner. So you know that you need to jump on the brakes. Whereas with this, there is no sound to give you any indication. Uh, we come into the hairpin. Uh, it's about 55 coming through the hairpin. That is not a bad showing. But it gets out the corner super well with those electric motors. Because obviously there is no lag or anything. It is just instant torque, and that is going to help us up the hill here. A big slide through that corner there. That might have cost us a little bit of time. We're going to just keep it nice and slow through here. So we're out wide once again. I was a little bit wide on the previous run, so we might need to slow it down a bit more on the final attempt. This corner here, we don't quite have the grip to get away with belting through the corner. We have a little brush on the exit, but nothing too terrible we're a lot cleaner through these corners here definitely faster than the previous run okay coming up to the final corner here that is the two minute mark let's see if we can get the power down the hill the weight is going to help the vehicle down here and we cross the line it was a 2.8 28429 is going to put this above the Porsche Taycan in fifth place and that is now our fastest electric vehicle to run down the rally course it actually puts the vehicle in fifth place overall and we still have one more attempt to go the Ford Bronco R is sat in fourth place with a 27.494 so possibly we could beat that um, there was a few areas there. I could have been a little bit smoother. Maybe we've got the power down a little bit earlier. So we've got one more attempt. Let's see what we can do. Okay, this is it. If we can shave off another second, we will beat the Ford Bronco's time. It's a tall order, but possibly doable. It actually gets quite a lot of speed down this straight. We're up to nearly 170 miles an hour down this straight uh, jump on the brakes early that was much much better this time we get a little drift on the exit but that's okay um, i have tuned the gears uh, sorry not the gears the differential to 64 percent rear biased uh, which i have been doing on some of the more recent vehicles it just gives us a little bit of oversteer in the corners that can help rotate the car through the corners a little bit easier and obviously that is what we want. Obviously the all wheel drive vehicles can get a bit of understeer. So biasing the differential to the rear negates a little bit of the understeer. Gives us a bit more oversteer. It helps us get through the corners a little bit better. We were definitely more flat down the straight there. It soaks up the bumps absolutely lovely, I have to say. We've got a heap of understeer coming into the uh, hairpin though. That wasn't great, but then we power down the straight here. I'm going to jump on the brakes a little bit earlier, try and tuck in nicely. That was almost perfect through there. That means we can get the power down nicely up the hill here. I am flat to the floor. I'm going to have a little jump on the brakes. We weren't out wide. If anything, we were a little bit too uh, shallow on that car there. We turned in a little bit too early. Let's see if I can uh, keep the power going through this corner here. Yes, jump on the brakes early, coast through the corner and the power on the exit. That was the way to do it. Although we're way off the line on the exit there. That is going to cost us a couple of tenths. Now coming up to the final corner. I don't think we're going to be any faster than our previous run. Let's see if we can get it. Get the power down down the hill and we cross the line. It was a 2.7, but I don't think it's going to beat the Broncos time. 2.7.895. That does put it just behind the Bronco. Unfortunately, we couldn't climb up another position, uh, but we did beat our previous lap time. So that will be the time for the Rivian R2.
R1T. Sorry, I've been saying RT1. It's actually the R1T. Um, let's go to the leaderboard, though, and see how it compares. Well, there we have it. That was the time for the Rivian R1T. Um, a cracking vehicle. It actually put an amazing lap time down there. A 27.895 will put the Rivian in fifth place overall on our leaderboard. So it is in the top five. A couple of tenths behind the Ford Bronco R. That was uh, that ran quite a long time ago, actually. The Bronco that was one of our um, earlier vehicles. Um, obviously, the all-wheel drive and electric combination will have helped the Rivian out massively. Um, it did beat the Porsche Taycan, which is another all-wheel drive electric vehicle. Obviously, the Taycan is a sports car whereas the Rivian is an off-road design pickup. So the Rivian did have a little bit of an edge over the Taycan in that respect, um, but it is nice to compare those vehicles. And of course, the Jaguar I-Pace, which is all the way down in 14th place, uh, that is an all-wheel drive SUV, electric also, um, so probably more similar to the Rivian, and the Rivian has absolutely smashed it. So there we go. Couldn't knock the Mercedes-Benz truck off its podium position in first place, though. A two minute, three second. I don't think anything's going to be beating that for a while. Not the nicest looking car, the Rivian, I have to say. Uh, personally, I wouldn't buy one of these in real life. Uh, it looks a bit like a fake pickup truck, in my opinion. And I'm not the biggest fan of electric cars either, but... You know, the time speaks for itself. You have to give credit where credit is due. It did put an impressive lap time down. It was also very, very controllable. So if you're planning to build this as a rally car, then I would highly recommend it. Um, it was very, very stable. Uh, the only bad part of the vehicle is the immense weight. You have to brake super, super early um, in the corners because it has so much weight and momentum going into the corners. You're just going to uh, fly out of the corner if you don't get it slowed down early enough. So that does take a bit of getting used to, but once you get used to that, I think by the third run, I was slowing down a bit earlier in the corners. Um, it, it was a lot better. It was much, much more controllable. But that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could smash the like button and subscribe if you are new we do one of these episodes every saturday at 7 p.m so tune in next week to see what vehicle we take down the rally course and of course if you have any suggestions let us know down in the comments and maybe your vehicle will be featured in the next episode so thanks all so much for watching hope you did enjoy and i'll see you next time